does it not matter that we're testing raw versus cooked because there is no difference for the reaction in our body or because by cooking the food, it denatures it and makes it mush and we can't measure it? Well, I'm glad you're asking the question. So the question is, um, should you use the source material, the food chemical, and process it however you do it to make it into a consistent and standardized assay? And by the way, we standardize each of the antigens separately. And when you think from a marketing point of view rather than a scientific point of view, well, from a marketing uh, and sales uh, messaging, you might say to people, hey, we use cooked foods, more like what you get when you eat. Now, when you stop there, people say, gee, maybe I'd rather have you measure cooked foods rather than raw foods or whole foods. Now, there are three problems that get ignored, and they turn out to be critical. The first is that not only do we process the antigens, we extract them because it's the soluble native, not denatured. It's the soluble native antigens that are the ones you really want. And so we have a special volatile buffer that extracts the soluble antigens. Then we put this through a cold sterilization procedure that allows only or primarily the soluble antigens to come through, excluding the high, super high molecular weight distracting items that can cause cross reactions and false results. Then we operate the buffer to leave exactly the soluble antigens as they are found in nature. And we have found scientifically that nature, nurture, and wholeness is a good guide for everything we do. But as or more importantly, when you cook a food, by definition, you bring in heat, you change the structure, you denature the proteins, you denature what is in the food. And if you then take that random amino acid sequence that has refolded itself randomly when the heat is removed, you don't have the native or soluble antigens that you're interested in because you just cook them and denature them. Now, I understand that this is a bit technical, but people do need to understand that when you cook a food, you change its antigenic structure randomly, not specifically. And we found out very early on, this goes back to the early 80s, that you needed to get the soluble reactive antigens in a novel soluble buffer to extract them then filter them so you get what you want and not what you don't. Then allow the buffer to go away so that you can coat on the surface of the plate defined amounts of each different antigen as it is found in nature, which is what you want. Because now you can get functional information and with our LRA one-step novel procedure, you get information about T cells and B cells, you get information about how cells interact with the purified antigen just as it exists in nature. So use nature, nurture, and wholeness. Don't be fooled by marketing gimmicks where you're using passe technology, that is in vitro antibody measurement, with the fatal flaw when you measure antibodies like IgG or an IgG subset. You can measure the presence of the antibody using classic physical chemistry, person and yellow physical chemistry. But you don't know the function. You don't know if that was a helpful or a harmful B cell antibody. Many antibodies are helpful in neutralizing. Only a few antibodies are complement fixing and harmful. We need to distinguish them. The body distinguishes them. The LRA by ELISA Act test being ex vivo distinguishes them. So there are many reasons why you want to follow an ex vivo assay that gives you purified extracted antigens in defined procedures with defined uh, quality control. And that is the state of the art. It's been the state of the art for several decades. We're glad that we continue to lead 
we extract all of the antigens ourselves, which means we can do the largest number of foods and preservatives, the largest numbers of toxins, environmental substances, um, um, toxic metals, which act as small molecules that distort the body, making it foreign to itself, and even down to dander, hair, and feathers, uh, which sometimes are causes of reactions for some individuals. So when you want the most complete testing, the most accurate testing, when you want the most functional and predictive testing, then you want LRA by ELISA Act with the extracted antigens du jour and not cooked, not extracted, not in vitro test tube testing because you need both T and B cells. That means you have to be functional. You have to have a true cell culture to get both T and B cells at the same time. And I will note that when we started in the early 80s, if you wanted to measure one substance by colony formation or one substance by um, thymidine incorporation, uh, it would cost two to $300 per item. Whereas in some of our larger arrays today, you can buy groups of these tests for less than $3 each. So it's a heck of a value. It is functional. It is predictive clinically, because we've done more clinical outcome successful studies than any other immunology lab. And it uses mother nature respectfully rather than a marketing gimmick.